I hope you all had a joyful and safe Christmas. Christmas this year felt so different due to all the restrictions on getting together required because of the out of control coronavirus pandemic. It felt different, yet it seemed difficult to lose completely the feeling of joy that Christmas brings. For me, it was especially a wonderful time. It was my grandson Emil, who is now four months old, first Christmas. And for my grandson Han, who is two and a half years old, it was the first Christmas that he was full of exuberance over the many gifts waiting for him under the tree. It was his first experience with Santa Claus. And touching my heart, it was the first Christmas where Han noticed the manger and asked who the baby in the manger is. I dutifully told him the baby is Jesus and the mother's name is Mary and the father is Joseph. This lit up Han's face and for the next several days, he kept repeating to everyone that the baby's name is Jesus. There is so much joy in Christmas as we share with each other gifts and time together in remembrance of the birth of Jesus. I have been reflecting a lot over the past 10 months on how we experience joy, even in time of such upheaval in our world, personal sadness, with the death of people we love so dear, like Elaine Loke and Esther Bowen, and of course, the difficulties brought about by the pandemic. And if you've heard any of my past midweek reflections, they all, to varying degree, express my wrestling with remaining joyful in face of the pandemic and personal losses. This is what I am beginning to understand more and more. That is, joy is a wonderful feeling, but simply a fleeting feeling that does not do much good against the darkness and pain we often contend with. Rather, joy forged as a byproduct of love, hope, and faith is a powerful elixir, which gives us the fortitude and strength to move forward in our lives and bring with each new day a little bit more of the kingdom of God to our world. The three ingredients, a heaping dose of love mixed with hope and faith are the only necessary ingredients for the elixir of joy. While writing this, I recall the words of St. Paul as he wrote in 1 Corinthians, love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Paul then concludes this particular passage with what I believe is one of the most impactful statements in all of scripture. He writes, and now these three remain, faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is love. I am able to be joyful. I am able to turn to the light of Christ in the midst of darkness. I am able to stand ready to serve when I keep in balance, love, hope, and faith. My favorite Christmas hymn is In the Bleak Midwinter, especially its last verse. What can I give him, poor as I am? If I were a shepherd, I would bring a lamb. If I were a wise man, I would do my part. Yet what can I give him? Give my heart. My prayer for all of this, all of us this Christmas tide and beyond is for us to give our hearts to God and to each other and let the elixir of joy always bring us out of the darkness toward the light of God. Joy to the world. The Lord has come. Let earth receive her King.